A rectangular solid is an example of a prism. Start with a rectangle, make a parallel rectangle, connect the corners, and we have a rectangular solid. And I've chosen to make three of the edges dotted to indicate which of the edges would not be visible if all of the faces were not clear. Here's a triangle. Here's a parallel triangle. We connect the corners. And now we have a triangular prism. And we can do the same thing with a hexagon. A second hexagon. Connect the corners. And we have a hexagonal prism. And here's a triangle where the three sides all have different lengths. But we can still make a matching triangle that's parallel to the first one, connect the corners, and we have another triangular prism. In a rectangular solid, any pair of parallel faces may be considered the bases. In other prisms, the bases are the two parallel polygons that are not rectangles. The volume of a rectangular prism is the volume is equal to the length times the width times the height. If the length and the width are used as the dimensions of the rectangles chosen to serve as the bases, then the area of the base, capital B, is base equals the length times the width. The word here is base. We've used that word before. Previously, the base referred to one of the sides of a triangle or a parallelogram, and when we measured a base, we measured its length. The variable we've used for that kind of base is lowercase b. For this kind of base, we use a capital B because this base represents one of the faces of a prism. And then when we measure this type of base, we measure it using area. So for a rectangular prism, the base is a rectangle and its area is the length times the width. And then we can substitute capital B for LW in the volume formula so that the volume of a rectangular prism is the area of the base times the height. And then that formula can be used to find the volume of all prisms. B stands for the area of the base, and H stands for the height of the prism. So in a triangular prism, the area of the base, or capital B, is the area of a triangle. For the hexagonal prism, it would be the area of a hexagon. And now let's look at an example. Here's a triangular prism. The bases happen to be right triangles. So we've shaded one of those right triangles green. And, of course, we know the volume is the area of that triangle times the height of the whole prism, which we've marked with a lowercase h. Well, now we need some measurements. First, the base and the height of the right triangle, which, of course, since it's a right triangle, it's the same as those two legs. Eight centimeters for the base, six centimeters for the height. And, of course, they're interchangeable. And then the height of the whole prism, we've measured it, and we've got nine. So first, let's do the area of the triangle. One half the base times the height, that's a half of six times eight, of course, 24 square centimeters. And then to get the whole volume, we'll take that 24 square centimeters, multiply it by nine, and the volume of this triangular prism is 216 cubic centimeters. Now we're going to look at something called surface area. And first, the lateral surface area, and that's some of the areas of the three rectangles. In order to do this, we're going to need to take one more measurement, the 10 centimeters as shown up at the top of the diagram. And that's the hypotenuse of the right triangle, which is one more edge of this prism, and we're going to need that to find the area of one of the three rectangles. Well, here we go. We're going to start with the one I've shaded green, and that's a 6 by 9 or 54 square centimeter rectangle. Then the bottom rectangle is orange, 8 by 9, 72 square centimeters. And the top rectangle is the one that needs the 10. 10 centimeters by 9 centimeters is 90 square centimeters. And, of course, the triangle in the back is the same as the one in the front. It's still 24 square centimeters. And so our lateral surface area is the three rectangles, and they add up to 216 square centimeters. And then we add that lateral surface area plus the two triangles, and our grand total, the total surface area, 264 square centimeters. Well, now let's look at a hexagonal prism. The area of a hexagon is a little bit tricky, so someone's already figured it out for us, and it's 260 square millimeters. Someone's also measured the height of this 
hexagonal prism and gotten 25 millimeters. The volume then is the area of the base, 260 times 25, or 6,500 cubic millimeters. Now let's look at the surface area. Start with the lateral surface area. There's six rectangles in this prism, and since it's a regular hexagon with each side 10 millimeters, each rectangle is 10 millimeters by 25 millimeters, or 250 square millimeters. Since there's six of those rectangles, we multiply six by 250 to get 1,500 square millimeters is the lateral surface area. Then the total surface area is the area of the two bases, which are both hexagons, plus the area of the six rectangles. The total for the six rectangles is 1,500. Each base is 260. We add it all up. The total surface area is 2,020 square millimeters. And here's one more example. We have a triangular prism whose bases are each equal lateral triangles. So we need some measurements. We'll start with the height of the whole prism. It's 12 centimeters. And then the side of each one of the triangles is rounded to 5.8 centimeters to the nearest tenth. And the height of each one of the equilateral triangles is 5 centimeters. And then the area of each one of those triangles is half the base times the height. We get out a calculator and we get 14.5 square centimeters is the area of our base. Then the total volume is the area of the base times the height. 14.5 times 12 is 174 cubic centimeters for the volume of this prism. And now let's get the lateral surface area. Each rectangle is 12 by 5.8, or 69.6 .6 square centimeters. There's three of those rectangles, so the lateral surface area is 208.8 square centimeters. And then to get the total surface area, we add the area of each of the triangles, 14 and a half square centimeters, plus the lateral surface area, and we get that the total surface area is 237.8 square centimeters. The formula Volume is equal to BH can be used to find the volume of all prisms. The capital B stands for the area of a base and H stands for the height of the prism. In this lesson, we've only looked at something called right prisms, where the lateral faces are all perpendicular to the bases, but this formula works for all prisms, including prisms where the lateral faces are not perpendicular to the two bases. The lateral surface area of a prism is the sum of the areas of the lateral faces. The total surface area of a prism is the sum of the area of the two bases added to the lateral surface area.